We saw a lot of people for Kimberly. It was uh, a lot of actresses, pretty, some pretty big names came after, wanted to be in the movie. But we had to find somebody that was sensitive, you know, vulnerable. Once we saw tape on AJ and then we brought her in, she just nailed it. You guys all heard about Flight 180, right? How the kid got the survivors off the plane? You mean, uh, it's Brownie? Yeah. My premonition is just like his. With AJ Cook, I think we are the luckiest people on the planet. She's lovely, she's talented, she's doing a terrific job. A girl that could have some fun because they're going on a trip, they're going to have a good time. Yet somebody that could stand up to Clear and kind of challenge Clear and raise the bar with Clear. You know what? What? Like you're a coward. I think that you hide in here so you don't have to help another living soul. In my opinion, you're already dead. I feel like we're at the beginning of what is going to be a very long and successful career for her. One of the things I love about Keegan Connor Tracy is her energy. And I think that the role of Kat needs to embody that kind of self-aware, nervous energy of somebody who uh, is really so self-absorbed that without being overly malicious, is incredibly rude and incredibly insensitive to the feelings of all those around her. Well, this cannot be happening, see, because my career is at a peak and I finally met a quality guy. But doing it with this sort of, you know, glib glee. She's very happy to be incredibly mean to you, but doesn't know that. Oh, God. I know I'm so thirsty. Do you guys have any Fiji or something? And that is what Keegan brings to this, is that she's able to create a character that you kind of dislike intensely, but you don't dislike so much so that you don't understand why she is the way she is. I oh. ah! Jesus Christ, you think you can give me the heads up before you do that next time? Yeah, sure. I'll just put it on quiet mode. I think that's going to provide an interesting vulnerability at certain times that make you care when she dies, but in some ways be glad that she's dead. Casting TC as Eugene, which we originally sort of envisioned as sort of a Woody Allen nebbishy character, has got 10 times more life than it ever had. It's got 10 times the personality, this charisma that TC brings to it. He's just, he's such a great presence. <laughs> I mean, the timber of his voice and the way that he can take the most absurd lines and deliver them with such gravitas that you believe what's happening. Wait, 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 wait. This is where it starts to get a little freaky, right? So a month goes by, everything seems okay, and then all the survivors start to die, one by one. As a performer, he really is able to work with his eyes. He doesn't have to speak, and that was the great bonus on top of the fact that he's got such a deep, rich speaking voice. I'm the one that controls my life, me, not fate, me. He can really say nothing and say even more. From the first day rehearsals, it was like, that's amazing. That's great. I control my fate. Me. I don't know why we're even here. I don't know what you want from me. Some crazy chick blocks the highway with the car, said there'd be an accident and it was. Big deal. But if I was never meant to pull over, we all should have died in that pile. Here's what I don't get. When I'm on death, does all this shit to make sure that I win these tickets and end up on Route 18 at exactly the right time for the pileup. Yeah. Well, why single me out? What am I in the great scheme of things? It's fucking weird, man. You think I stepped off late 180 or something? Don't worry, I'll keep an eye on her. <laughs> oh, that makes me feel a lot better. Thanks. Okay. All right. Hello, the guys are waiting. Watch it! <laughs> Watch it. Sorry, sorry. My fault. You want me to drive? No, I'm good. Oh, you're freaking mine? What the hell are you doing? What is it? What are you freaking out? Oh, look, there was a pile, there was a pile of dead people in it, and or there's gonna be. I I saw it. Okay. That's it. My turn to drive. Just, just relax. You need to chill the fuck out. Okay, you may be right. You may be right. Yeah, of course I will. 
Mom? Yeah. You think? You think the guys that were talking to us today were BSing us or what? Yeah. Some people just need some rewiring, that's all. Lights out. <clears throat> the doctor's ready for you now. He gives me the gas and I wake up with my pants and button again. We ain't paying. <laughs> Tim. Which means death could be coming for us. Do you know what? You're all certifiable. I can't believe I've been listening to this crap. Let's go, Tim. Mom, stop drinking. Yeah, lady, we're just janking the chain. Well, then you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Scaring people like that. Let's go. Laura, you okay? <laughs> my, uh... My husband died four years ago. And now, Tim... There's nothing left for me. Look, don't say that, okay? Do you know what? If I, um... If I'm supposed to go to heaven and be with my family... Okay with that. I can accept it. You gotta trust me, okay? We can fight this. If we just stick together long enough for her to have her baby. Do you do it? All right, if you'll excuse me, I have a funeral to plan. Favorite character on paper was Rory. You know, bust me, bitch. It's great comic relief. He's got a drug problem. He's funny. It's all that. And Jonathan Cherry is. Awesome, awesome casting, because it's just so funny, and the way he delivers these lines, it's like, oh, yeah, that's good, that's better. Calm down, Kimmy. It's not drugs. It's just a little weed. <laughs> a lot of fun. Very opposite of me, actually. What I think will surprise audiences is that for all of the humor and for all of the sort of, you know, itchiness that he has with Cat, there are some moments where he reveals how vulnerable he really is, that the sort of shields come down. And right then and there, you're really going to be sympathetic towards Rory. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Will you take these? Uh, and if I die, um, you just uh, take all the drugs out of my car and uh, you know the, the paraphernalia and the, the porno, um, you know anything else that's going to. Uh, break my mother's back. You like him at first because he's the funny guy, but then you care about him because you realize that there's a place that humor comes from that we all share. Get you to step out of the van, miss. Are you kidding me? What did I do? This vehicle's been reported stolen. What do you mean, Grand Theft Auto? That's insane. If you wanted to boost a car, you really should have waited till after the birth, you know? I mean, no oh, Twinkie defense, oh, but... Oh, my uh, God, Jorge, this is unbelievable. I swear to God, when I get out of here, I'm going to sue his cheating ass off. Michael Landis. Yeah, baby. What's going on here? We'd met with a whole bunch of different people, and at the time, he wasn't available. And then, through a very, you know, variety of circumstances, he became available, and we snapped him up, and it was very quick. Within, I think, 36 hours, he was on board. Today, some loony bitch blocks traffic and avoids the worst pileup in years. I should be so damn unlucky. Hey, look, you weren't there. It was weird. She, she knew that, hey, she knew the log truck was going to shit the bed. She knew. They called me on a Thursday. They said, go in and read. And I went in and read. And then they hired me Friday, and I was on a plane Sunday. We just wanted to find someone that was young and that could relate to these kids, you know, so it wasn't an older guy, um, but still strong enough, you know, and yet sensitive. Evan Lewis is dead. I know. I've been getting calls all morning from everyone who was on the on-ramp. And we're going to get together at my apartment tonight. Everyone on death's list will be there. And he was great. And, and so he's brought a really good kind of balance to that part.